They were at the center of some of the biggest bank failures in US history, but haven't spoken publicly until now. I never envisioned myself or SVB being in this situation. Within just a few hours, our depositors withdrew $16 billion from the bank. The former heads of Silicon Valley and Signature Banks before lawmakers to defend the turbocharged growth and investment misjudgments that contributed to their downfall. But former Silicon Valley Bank head Gregory Becker thinks the US Federal Reserve, one of the regulators, is partly to blame. The messaging from the Federal Reserve was that interest rates would remain low and that inflation would, that was starting to bubble up would only be transitory. Instead, inflation was spiraling to a 40-year high. And when the Fed began driving it down by raising its benchmark interest rate aggressively, SVB made huge losses on investments whose value drops as those rates rise. When the bank signaled it was in trouble, customers pulled nearly $42 billion in just 10 hours and were about to take out another $100 billion before regulators stepped in. At one point, a million dollars was flowing out of SVB every second. To put that in context, when Washington Mutual Bank collapsed in 2008, depositors pulled a mere $19 billion and that took 16 days. So SVB's collapse was fueled partly by two features of the smartphone era, social media, which accelerated the panic, and banking apps, which can move huge amounts of money instantaneously. And yet, if these executives are trying to deflect blame for their judgment, some lawmakers are incensed that SVB's leaders made millions from shares they sold before its collapse. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC, had to backstop all customer deposits beyond the $250,000 federal insurance limit. How much of the $40 million that you earned from loading up SVB Bank with risk, are you planning to return to the FDIC? Senator, I know there's going to be a process review of compensation. I'll take that I'll... as a no. And this reckoning doesn't end yet. These executives will face further questions from lawmakers in the House of Representatives on Wednesday. Owen Fairclough, CDTN, Washington.